Well, today we're here in uh, TP Cotter's Bar, and we're delighted to welcome a whole lot of visitors from Borneo, of all places. Now, how did all of these fine people make their way from Borneo to Macroom, and why? And of course, the answer is sitting here next to me in the form of Brother Michael. Brother Michael. Charles Michael. Charles Michael. Yeah. Yes, I think the Malaysians know you as Brother Charles, don't they? Yeah. And I, I'm so notorious with that name, I couldn't change it back to Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so was this actually your name in religion or was it... Uh, it was given to me. I had no choice. Who, who gave it to you? In those days, all orders... To, uh, I suppose to to signify our change of lifestyle, where we are like Saint Peter, you know, was called Saul. So it was the custom, right up to Vatican II, yes. to give us uh, 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 another name. Yes. And so, like Saul was called Paul, and yes. so on. I suppose that's the the background to it. Uh, yes. So, uh, so, uh, brother, would you in introduce yourself now and say what your connections are with this area? Well, I was born in a townland called Koshlaura, which is in the diocese of Clondrahad, uh, and our. The, I'm on the upper part of the parish, Karaganima, that's where I went to church, that's where I was baptised, that's where we worshipped as a boy, and uh, I went to Manafluk school, and after that, uh, our De La Salle brother visited the school looking for, for, for candidates for the brotherhood, uh, and so I was... Uh, about to leave school, I suppose, at that time, myself and Dini Lynch, whose brother actually married my sister, John, you probably didn't know. Indeed. Yeah. So uh, Dini uh, didn't take the bait. I was glad to get away from snagging turnips and uh, <laughs> footing turf and so on. Yes. And, in, uh, in inhospitable countryside uh, yes, at that time. And, uh, Cost Laura, God help us to see. <laughs> <laughs> Not so today, by the way. <laughs> no, yeah. But there are different kind of people living there now. Not uh, very few of the people, the families that I knew, uh, have all passed on. So uh, wh wh how many of you were there in the family? Five. Five boys or girls? Three, uh, three boys, including me. Yes. And two girls. And two girls. And only two of us left. Only two. Yeah, yeah. So, would you just maybe outline the connections with uh, the, the family you have in McCroom at the moment now and in the in the area? Well, uh, my sister, as you know, Breda's mother. That's uh, Breda Cotter here uh, in Yes, TPs. she married, uh, uh, you know, Mona Horner man. Yes. And they bought up the, the castle bar. Yes. Uh, he was also, uh, uh, you, you know, in the old days they had treasures. Yes. So, but unfortunately, he died young. Yeah. He died at 35, leaving her with three children. Indeed, yes. And she continued the business for some years, lost one of the ch children to meningitis, actually. And then, uh, after she sold and moved up to Glen Park. Yes. Um, and uh, retired there, more or less. Uh. So, um, uh, then Mrs. Cochran, Nora, she's still alive. Yes, Mrs. Cochrane now lives in opposite the cha in the chapel in Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill. Yes, she came from Coolahan, of course. Yes, and had a farm there. And but before the husband died, since she had no sons, five daughters. Yes, uh, one of them was Daniel's wife. <laughs> Elite. Yes. Elite. Yes, Elite Margaret. Huh? Yes, and she passed away young. Yes, and uh, uh, when. Nobody was to take the farm. They all married out. Some of them to farmers. None of them would take the, this farm, so they sold the farm. Yes. And then she moved into the into town. The town. Yes. So that's my connection here. And of course, when I come home now, uh, Koshlaura was eventually sold off. Yes. And uh, farm was sold because they all moved out, including Mihal. Yes. He did want. He didn't want to be a farmer. But you still find plenty of uh, connections here. To oh come yes, back yes, to. yes. And yeah. you are, you are you do come back quite regularly. In the last few years, them. almost every year. Yes. But the first time I went out, we were, it wasn't the custom then, pre-Vatican. Yes. I was seven years before I got back. 
Yes, and um, you left home quite, quite, you were quite young when you joined the De La Salle's, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, going to, into 14, I suppose. 14 years old. Yeah. And was this to the De La Salle house in Waterford? No, in, in Leeks, uh, near Port Leash, near Mount Rat. It's called Castletown. Castletown, yeah. yes. Ah, and yes. it's still there. Yeah. Yes, it is indeed, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, then after, uh, I suppose, what might be called a novitiate? Well, at first, to see, we, we, Secondary school uh, we were a, a kind of what we would call, I suppose, initiation years, yes. two or three years, and, and we studied, you know, the, for the intercert. Yes. And then, when we were about 15, 16, we, if we thought we were thought worthy, we, were, we joined the novitiate. Yes. Yeah. Was it a lonely time for you? Of course, we weren't allowed home for a whole year. We never got home for Christmas. And that was the custom. They caught us young. They t treated us rough. They told us nothing. What you <laughs> <laughs> so what do you have to say about all that? Well, I don't think many people would be ensnared like I was. <laughs> but I have no regrets. And I'm very happy for what I have achieved through education and through going on the missions. Yes. Uh, I decided to go on the missions. Uh, yeah. And how, what age were you when you went first? To where? To on the missions? Well, because uh, there were a group of us. Uh, uh, we had a missionary class to get in Mallow. Yes. And uh, we sat for the English exams, senior Oxford and so on. Yes. And then I went over to England for three years and I did teacher training in Strawberry Hill, you know, Twickenham. Oh, yes. St. Mary's College. Still yeah. there, yes. So uh, I was fairly well equipped when I went out. Yes. So yeah. did you go directly then to Borneo? Yeah. It was a new opening the year before. I was the second team and uh, 1950. Yes. And I was there for seven years. What were the challenges? Surround. It was very primitive. It was after the war. And the, you know the Japanese invaded yes. Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but uh, as I say, I was in Sarawak first. It's, uh, w they had two British colonies to see. Mm -hmm. Formerly, the uh, Sarawak was under a kind of a, uh, I suppose, Brook rule. We call it. Uh, he was, um, I suppose, from the East India Company or something, and then uh, uh, North Borneo was under a charter company. And uh, after the war, of course, neither state could manage to. Uh, there was a lot of destruction, and you know, um, buildings, everything was destroyed, especially in North Borneo, where we are, yes. where I, we are now. And so they felt they couldn't run the country anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was handed over to the British, and it was a crown colony for about um, from uh, forty-five, as well, six to sixty. Or that way. Did that help? Well, um, we had no choice, uh, not much of a choice. Now I'm talking politics. Uh. <laughs> 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 the, the Brits were, were bankrupt after two world wars. They yes. were actually, they couldn't yes. run the colony. They couldn't, it, it, it was proved in Malaysia yes. that they, they couldn't uh, uh, secure us. Yes. The Japanese came down. They came in the wrong way. Uh, they thought they'd come in by sea. They came by land down from Thailand. Uh, yes, yes. And so uh, they were caught with their, as we say, their pants down. Right, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so there were tough times, of course. Oh, there were tough yeah. times in Europe too. And, they and uh, they, they, the only place they revolted was, it was called British North Borneo. Yes. D did Marshall, Ma the Marshall Plan touch places like Borneo at all? I suppose it did. No. 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 Marshall it Plan was, was mainly American, for, American Europe. For, yeah, for American. Germany, I suppose. Yeah. yeah the rebuilding of, of yeah. Germany. We had the British Council, you know. Uh, well, of course, it was a British colony until. But 16. we had the Colombo Plan, mm -hmm. whereby a lot of the local students had the opportunity to go for scholarships in Australia and New Zealand. Yes. So that came from the Australian and the New Zealand government. So slowly but surely, what, what, what do you think? Uh, what do you think of development in Borneo today? That's good, you know. I, I, I mean, uh, of course, the colonial powers—they uh, gave a lot, and, and, and I think the British Empire was one of the best empires, really, when you think of it. Uh, uh, you know, they, uh, but. Um, they treated us better, certainly, than they did India or uh, the African countries. Yes. 
you know, of course they extracted, uh, they, they didn't could. do it for nothing, yes. but they did start education, uh, uh, it was fairly free actually, education was very much done by the churches and by private uh, institutions, uh, yes. the Chinese yes. associations and so on. Now t uh, talk to me about education, uh, Did you, were you in the primary sector or the secondary sector? We, w we were asked, we took over the schools from the Mill Hill missionaries, Yes. because they were Dutch and English, and the the Dutch and Austrians, you know, the Austrians, and there were some Germans, there was a number of them, and they weren't interned. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the war, of course, you know that um, uh, um, well, Japan and, and Germany, of course, were allied, mm -hmm. and then, uh, the atom bomb, of course. Yes. So um, they turned the, uh, the Japanese, then uh, slaughtered all the German citizens, and yeah. seven or eight of our priests, including the head of the diocese, was taken and never heard of, and never found. Imagine, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, and this priest that came out of the internment were diseased, were sick, they were emaciated. So uh, they couldn't run the schools anymore. I see. So we were invited in to take yes. over. We had been in West Malaysia for uh, almost a hundred years before that. Okay. So you, you personally were you in in primary or secondary? I was always in secondary. Were you? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, brother no. also was in the, the primary. So we, yes. We took over both schools. Was the there was there a um, a willing take up? by the students at the time and by their parents of education after the war at that time and in the 50s? Did they come to school readily? Oh, yeah. I mean, Chinese love education. Yes. And uh, maybe the locals are uh, not so... <laughs> he's a local. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, we say local. He's a real native of the country, if you like it. Okay. Would you call yourself a real native, Richard? And uh, so is Frederick. And so is uh, Mary and James. Yes. And he's half half, I think. Are you a little bit of, yeah. little bit of both? Of, yeah, uh, I think the rest are all Chinese. Uh. Is there? Is there? Well, maybe I'll talk to the I'll talk yeah. to the lads about that and come back yeah. to you in, in just They're a very articulate a I moment. Uh, yes, I all gather. Them, all I gather. Yeah. Now look. Uh, now I've got Roland Cheng here next to Brother Mike. You don't? Are you? Is it all right to call you Brother oh, Mike? I love to be Mike. Okay. No. Mind about names. Can be Charlie Chaplin or anything like that. Uh, Roland, we'll just continue that, uh, if I may, on that team for just just a moment. We were just talking about, uh, I suppose. The um, uh, brother Mike has just been outlining maybe the Chinese origin of some of the people in Borneo and the Malaysian origin and so forth. Can you just say a little bit more on that and uh, explain to me how that has come about and what I impact it has in Borneo? Okay. The uh, British, prior to it being a colony, was under the, uh, the chartered company. It was a company to develop the state uh, for the benefit of the company with shareholders in England. So when they were asked to develop the state, they had the dilemma because they don't know where to bring the workers from. And uh, prior to that, they had a lot of experience with Indian workers in West Malaysia in the plantations. They also had experience with the Ceylonese in West Malaysia. But the, the British residents there and the uh, colonial officers prior to that, they had a lot of uh, ex uh, negative uh, remarks about them. So when they decided to bring in some of the Chinese from, from China at that time, they brought in mainly those Chinese, the Hakkas from uh, Canton uh, province, and they brought in some of the Shantung from the northern province. And how they enticed them was that they gave them land to develop the state, and I think at that time they gave them about 10 or 15 acres each so that they have small enclaves whereby you have the Shantung people, then you have the Hakka people. And then why did the British at that time wanted to bring the Chinese to come over instead of the Indians and so on was because as one colonial officer reported, he says the Chinese are hardworking and they love money. <laughs> <laughs> Has anything changed? 
Not much. <laughs> okay, so in a, in a certain sense, I suppose, you, you probably won't be familiar, but Brother Mike will. Are we talking here about something that paralleled plantations in Ireland? Not quite, I suppose. It wasn't forced. It was forced in Ireland. Yes. We had no choice. To hell or to Connacht, you know yes. that phrase. Eh? Yes. And, uh, and of course, Ulster was the, the most nationalistic yes. uh, province in Ireland. Eh? Yes. And that's where all, they were always rebelling and so on. Yes. And a thorn in the, in the, uh, to the Brits. Uh, yes. British. Uh. Okay. So uh, then they brought in these. Uh, uh, you know, for the benefit of you, they brought in these people from from Scotland, mostly Presbyterians, yes. ca with Calvinists. You know, very strict, uh, and and uh, the local people were just whereas they were just outside. moved out. Yes, yes. Terrible, and you but had many. You had two or happen. three plantations. You had one in the Midlands, yes. Queens County, Kings County. To oh, say. They the, took uh, the best land. Yes. And planted their people, like you bring over Kalant and his uh, Islamic, and put them into Penampang. Uh, yes. You know? <laughs> yes, it's terrible. Whereas in, in Borneo, we, they, as I said, they couldn't run the country after the war. Yeah. Uh. But uh, were, were, people, were people removed from the land so that, so that others could come in? Not so much so in the uh, case of, of British North Borneo, because at that time, uh, there was not that much that they could find in uh, North Borneo. In Brunei, they discovered oil very much early on. So they kept on to Brunei as a British colony until well until the 1980s, whereas they let go of Sabah and Sarawak much earlier on. So in terms of the natives, I think we have very good land laws uh, whereby the uh, government and the and the chartered company at that time had reserved lands for the natives. And I think a lot of this is because of that legislation was brought over from Hong Kong. And I think that is very much depends on the, uh, the particular resident of that area. And it so happened that I think we were fortunate in that sense, whereby we had some of the uh, better residents who had set up the land laws so that the natives were protected, probably because they learned from other jurisdictions. Uh, in some senses, when I think of Borneo, when I think of that, the, the, uh, those spice islands in, in that part yes. of the world, um, I think of a lot of uh, afforestation and, and natural vegetation. Are there huge areas in Borneo that are, are still under, under uh, natural vegetation? A large part of it is. Yes. In, in fact, the uh, state government at, at this moment, they have reserved, I think, a large part of it called the heart of Borneo. So that would encompass both Sabah, <coughs> Sarawak and Kalimantan, whereby they want to preserve the uh, very essence of Sabah so that the natural vegetation will be still there. And uh, this requires a concerted effort of the state governments of Sabah, Sarawak and also the Indonesian province of Kalimantan. Okay, and com coming out of a state of absolute um, um, uh, ignorance, really, at this stage, do you still have, or not, do you still have, uh, such as exists, for instance, in parts of South America, do you still have native villages dotted within these <coughs> areas in living in relatively primitive conditions? They would still be a great number of natives, uh, but there are not that much difference in, in terms of uh, equality and access to education and standards of living. The only difference would be, I think, because the, uh, the <coughs> emphasis in the days of uh, Brother Charles would be on English, whereas now the government's aspirations is for the people to be learning the national language, which is the Malaysian language. But as far as most of the other facilities, such as education, is concerned, I think that has been brought to the uh, within reach of most of the uh, of the natives. Of course, you do have problems whereby the native schools in the interiors would not be so accessible, and so you would still have problems whereby parents of children in the interior region they would not be so um, readily send the children to school because they need them to work on the farms. 
So I think that has something that the, the government would have to address and which we as a part of the, uh, the La Salian School family, we, we try our best to do whatever we can to bring forward a uh, little bit of what Brother Charles has uh, shared with us. So in a very limited way, we, we do try to do whatever we can to help the uh, natives because otherwise uh, the people in the interior would really be very reluctant to send their children to school. And I think that the key now is really education for the natives yes. so that they would be able to have an opportunity to move forward. Excellent. Okay, thank you, uh, Roland. And I'm just going to have a word here now with Tio Chi Kong. Yes. Uh, I didn't do too badly on that name, did I? Yes, very well. <laughs> very well. Um, uh, Tio, I understand that you're, are you the man responsible for organizing this trip? Yes. Me, uh, I'm the leader, but this fellow is organizing it. Uh, He's Richard, the Richard, but yeah, with both of us. Yes, okay. Yes. Good. Uh, coming back to this trip, it is this our ninth, ninth trip with Brother Charles. We started in 2006 when uh, well, it was our first tour. So you can see our t shirt here, we have nine star. Yes. Every star we send one year. So this is the ninth, uh, ninth trip that with brother. We started 2006. The first trip uh, we were uh, going to islands. We stopped in Dublin, but we didn't come down to Macroom down the south. So we went to Scotland and England. That was our first trip. So up and then we've been uh, Perth, Australia, uh, Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, and China, and Macau. And then and then we decided to come back again to come back to the roots of uh, brother Charles. Uh, to McCroom, and which is we want to find out where he's from, where he got baptized, where his school is, and then uh, yes. college that he taught, and then and then try to know the family of O'Reilly, his family, uh, the members down in McCroom here, and we are very happy to meet all of them. Uh, they are very nice people down, especially the Irish are very hostile people, very kind to us. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, hospitable. I'm sorry. Okay, hospitable. I'm sorry. Believe you me, we have yeah. we have, we have the others as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we we were treated very well down the last yeah. whole five or six days, and then and then the way they here also turned very nice to us. I I think it's the blessed Richard always playing is play to uh, to God say that uh, we have nice weather because like when we arrive here we look at the uh, uh, the the. the the forecast, the weather forecast, is always rain down in island, you know. Yes. So when you arrive in Macroom, it was sunshine all days, and then when you come down to uh, Kilkenny, yes. it was oh, it, it, it can sell, and then it was uh, uh, gloomy days, turn up sunshine again. Like yes. yesterday, we have a golf in in uh, Old Heads, and then we do travel around the ring ring of carries, and then uh, two days ago, and then we did ah, I have nice. a Kalani Lakes, and then we have a boat rides down in. And then they the also watched uh, this uh, movie, uh, this movie, the, the Step Dance. Yes. Uh, then Cow Dick Step Dance. And then it was the last third show of the year. It's going to close down today. I think today is the last show. And then it's going to restart again next year. Very good. Uh, after, the, during this uh, Easter uh, holiday next year. Yes. So we are very blessed and lucky to be here and then get all, enjoy all these local foods. Yes. And then the drinks down here last time, the bar here. And then I think we, we are happy, happy. Everybody here is very happy, and then we are very blessed. It sounds like you've gone native since you arrived. Yeah, yeah. We, we love it here. I think we're going to be back. I think when, whenever Brother Charles want to feel back to come back here, maybe we have time. We will come back here again to visit McCroom and the, uh, the, the Ore family. They are very nice, and then we, we love it. And well, then I'm quite sure that you'll, you'll be very welcome indeed. But, you know, it occurs to me that um, those of you who, who, who seem to be galloping around the world every year in such a fashion and playing golf have profited very well from your education that, uh, that uh, Brother Charles has given you. Yes. I think I would like, I personally, I, I would like to thank Brother Charles for being an educate, especially me, because I'm from a small town in, in Borneo, a small town we call it Membakut. It's around 70 kilometers from, from Kota Kinabalu. So after I finished my, my, uh, my bridge, uh, my uh, primary school, so I came down to KK, Kota Kinabalu, to, to look for elite school. At that time, La Salle is one of the top schools in, 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 in the state. And then we usually, well, our school start usually the first week of uh, January. So I came in as a kampung, we call it kampung with villagers, uh, from, from outskirts to, uh, to come in. At that time, I went to the education department to ask the official, 
uh, how to get into La Salle. He said, the only person you want to see is the principal of La Salle, Brother Charles. He's the only one can take you into La Salle, not Earth at that time. So it looked like he was very powerful. So the first day, <laughs> so the first day, when I think it's on the 3rd or 4th of January, so I went to the school with my grand uncle. So we didn't see my brother Chow. He was in, in the office. They would say that, I'm sorry, kids. My class all are full, were full. So, he, but the, uh, first of all, I, I thought I got no chance to, to get into La Salle. But lucky, brother Chow asked me to come back three days later, which is on Wednesday. So I came back on Wednesday with my grand uncle. Finally, he found me a, a space and put me in the class, uh, uh, which is, uh, we call it Form 1, which is uh, uh, Grade 7, I think here we call it. So I started my education in La Salle in 1978 through until the 1983. I would like to thank Brother Charles again, taking me and make me as a, a, a better person to be studying in La Salle. I love it and I met all my friends down in La Salle, my classmates, uh, Richard and Grebel, all my classmates throughout from Form 1 to Form 5. I thank you for, for Brother Charles for that. Although he come all the way from, from Ireland, and at that time we didn't know this Irish or English man, you know, I thought he was always British, you know. So <laughs> not until that uh, in, uh, and then also we didn't know he, he got another name called Michael. Not until 2006 when we visited in, 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 in Dublin and then he showed us around the, his original name. Because I went and looked at his passport. I said, how can Michael already? Always call him brother child. At that time, I only had his passport. I think at that time, Michael. I said, why, why are you calling Michael, brother? He's not brother child. Then he told us what, what he was named by the brothers when he joined the brothers' uh, 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 education. Oh. Lassa brothers. So, that was always good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a, a reputation yeah. widely, widely held, held in the De La Salle order. Uh, <laughs> I said a reputation widely yes. held in the De La Salle order. Yeah. I also have a, sorry. Yes, you go ahead. Actually, I, we also have yes. a primary school in uh, Kota Kinabalu called the Sacred Heart Primary School. And a lot of us came from the Sacred Heart Primary School, which is also uh, under the La Salle brothers. I so I had the opportunity to be with the uh, La Salle brothers schools from primary one until form six. Ah, so you were with him all the way up? Uh, not with him. No, but with, with De La Salle. Yes. yes. The all the way up. Excellent. Now I'm going to ask you to uh, introduce everybody around, but before I do that, I think I didn't say it to start. This is actually one class, isn't it? No, no. On, no only not one class. Only Gabriel, me, Richard and me, we are class of Edith. He's adopted class of Edith. <laughs> He's class of 73. He's a class of 72. Okay. They are so, just, they so are just friends. So a number, a number of different classes, but you would have been in school at the same time. No. Together. No. no? They, they were from different school though. Like, like, like Mary's from San Francisco. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Well, she, she came out all right out of that, didn't yeah. she? <laughs> okay. So will you introduce please? Sure. Um, now De we've got to help Danjo here with the camera work. So maybe you'd start on your on your right there and go that way. Okay, sure. On my right, this is Richard Steady, for, uh, for, so from class of 1982, La Salle. Okay. And uh, Fred Lee, Mr. Fred Lee is from class of 1972, I think, eh? La Salle. And that gentleman with the camera is uh, Henry Ng. He's a Catholic from Chung Chin School, which is uh, another school in our, our uh, it's a private school, I think, from our Kota Kinabalu. And Mr. Gabriel Chong, which is on the far right, 82. is class of 82, is our, my classmate. So, so where's the logo there? <laughs> and then the gentleman uh, down, down with the, the cam end, ca yes. camera is the James, Mr. James Akang, is from Kola Penyu. He's a Catholic. I think he went to school. Be, where's, where's your school? Is I don't know. Semesis <laughs> Javier. Javier, which is also a Catholic school in, in Keningau. And that, that gentleman also is a Lasallian, but he's been in Lasall only for six months. <laughs> 1975, I think. Yeah, class of 75. Yes. Uh, it's Dennis Lim. And then uh, Mary Sipound Mary is from San Francisco Convent, class of 80, 87, 88, 86, class of 86. And Renty from, from Chungjin, was it? I don't know. Tamplori School. So she was a teacher in Chungjin before, I think. And Jennifer is the wife of Roland. St. Patrick Towers. Uh, uh, we have already met. Yes. yes, excellent. So now just to wrap all this up, by the way, Daniel, we will say hello to Brother Mike's two cousins, two nephews, sorry, nephew and niece. Nephew and niece. I'm getting my genders as well mixed up as well as my races. 
so uh, just um, having introduced all of the visitors then, we come to uh, Brother Mike's, Brother Charles, nephew and niece here, Breda and Michael. Breda, you're worn out from all the celebrations. We had a great time. We had great celebrations on Sunday. Everybody was, all relations turned up to meet Uncle Mike and his friends. And we celebrated his 86th birthday last night with a sing song and 86. <laughs> So we had a great night again. But we're tired, That's but a happy tired. A happy you tired. look forward to this visit, do you? I do, yeah. We like yeah, having a... No, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and Michal, you were <coughs> Brother Mike's nephew. Brother Mike's nephew, correct, yeah. And you were, were you born in the same house? Actually born in the very same house, yeah. Well, very well, same town then, called Koshlora, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we both walked uh, to the exactly a mile, went to, to the national school, yeah. Yeah. And of course... Oh, there was no talk of shoes, I think, that time. <coughs> who, was, yeah. who was teaching in the school when you went there? Well, that was Master Ray, Master Ray Abdon, Michael Ray Abdon, oh, from yes. Rasheen, yes. and uh, Vera Halloran then. Oh, yes. She's married on top of the town. That's right. as such. So they were the two teachers at that time. <laughs> you didn't consider joining the Dillis Hall, or did you be <laughs> 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 I thought there was, a, there was a good man doing the job, so I left him carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I find the cell brother. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, uh, guys? Would he have made good, uh, good little cell brother? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think he would. I understand. Did, did a very good job, I must say. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. So now um, I have to call you by two names, brother Mike and bro uh, brother Charles, because you're known, of course, in Borneo as brother Charles. You must be very proud of your life's work. Very pleased with it. I am indeed. Uh, I have achieved, I think, uh, more than I would ever have achieved if I stayed at home. And uh, I, though I'm a teacher, I have learned more than I have thought. And I'm still learning. And I'm, very, I'm really part of the landscape there. And as I always say, I come home. And I love to come home with my relatives and friends, and they make me so happy, and especially, of course, Jack and Vida, because I have no... Uh, the only immediate f member of the family now is Mrs. Cochran, who is 94. So, so uh, I'm still very much... Of course, they tell me quietly in other ways, don't make a habit of coming too often. <laughs> 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 but I'm so proud of these. I mean... Uh, I'm just, I, I can't believe it. They're so generous, they're so kind. I'm not allowed even to think <laughs> yeah. of <getting> this journey. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Far less to pay. Well, you taught them that, didn't yeah. you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that they have to think for yeah. themselves. Well, and it's perfect. So I, I'm more at home there than here, really. Yes. But of course, the day might come when I will have to return because we don't have facilities for people. Of, you know. And that would be to Castletown, presumably, I it? guess so. Yeah. Yes, yes. But that will yeah. be a long time yet. Oh, another God's ten help. years, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's perfectly clear to me, uh, just in conclusion, um, Brother Mike, that these people hold you in great affection indeed. And I think that uh, all that remains really for us is to wish you a very, very happy birthday, which you had, I know, last night, yeah. celebrating it into today. Yeah. And uh, would you want to tell us what age you were? I'm, I, I, uh, sometimes I say I'm no 28. Lie, no because fibs, I was no, no fibs, brother. 68, <laughs> but I am really 86. 86. So plus, I think it is a good one day. clap for that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much indeed. Uh, for and, and we wish you a very happy holiday for the remainder of your time and to all your very good friends here from Borneo. God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.